May the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to this Sunday, the very first Sunday of Advent. Ye be. I'll say Happy New Year to all of you as Catholics. Today is the very first day of the new liturgical year. And today we begin Advent. You know, Advent has its origin from the Latin word Adventus, you know, meaning coming. The translation, this translation came from the Greek word Perusia. <laughs> It is a season of preparation where we are preparing to celebrate Christ at Christmas. And so in this season, we are patiently waiting for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And also not just patiently waiting, but we are vigilant. You know, we have to be ready. That's what the readings of today are telling us, especially the gospel of today tells us that as Christians, the coming of our Savior should not take us unawares. You know, we have to be vigilant. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared. This is one of the basic characteristics of a Christian. A child of God is supposed to be ready at all times. A child of God should always remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the coming of our Savior will be at an hour nobody expects. And so because of that, we have to be on lats. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. That's what the readings are telling us. And Advent is a time where we are not just preparing, but we are, we are, we are praying for the coming of our Savior, you know. We are praying for Christ to come, you know. We are inviting Him. To come as fast as possible and that is what a true christian is all about that's what true christianity is all about that you are not afraid you are not alarmed in the coming of our savior but that you are even eager and willing praying and preparing you know and expecting it's a time of expectation you are expecting you know when when you you, you don't expect a thief to come into you. You don't expect a bad thing to happen to you. You don't expect a bad person to come into you. But when your uncle is coming from America, from London, from Abuja, you know, as the case may be, you'll be joyfully expecting. So, so Advent is a time where we are expecting the coming of our Savior. But then we are also made to understand that we have to be ready. You know, we have to be prepared. We have to work hard. And readiness here means repentance. Readiness here means yeah, putting ourselves together. You know, looking, take, doing, taking stock of our lives. And you see, as we begin a new liturgical year, we are also ending, you know, the, the, the physical year. And the physical year is, is coming to an end. We take stock of how we have lived our life from January to December. You know, so this is also a time where we take stock, you know, and see what we have done, what we have not done well, and see how we can improve and make it better. So as Christians, you see, there are two things involved here. We are taking stock of our life in the normal calendar year, but also in the liturgical year, we are beginning a new year. A new year also means that it is a time where we begin a new life in Christ. It is a time where we resolve to live better. And as we resolve to live better, automatically it prepares us for heaven. Heaven is our goal. Heaven is our destination. Heaven is our target. Every other thing we are doing in this world is temporal. Our target is heaven. And so Advent gives us a time to prepare our soul, not just our body. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the thing is so sweet. Why the wall is preparing for the body, why the wall is preparing for the material things like celebration, eating, drinking, you know, preparing, buying things, marriages, building houses, trying to get things, 
ready the children are we buy clothes for our children these are physical preparation it's not as if we're not involved in them we're also involved in them because st james said we are in the world even though we are not of the world but we are in the world we can't deny the fact that we are in this world and so we need to do this physical preparation too by you know buying uh, rice buying tomato you know all these things are very good but then the essence you know the essence is the soul we need to prepare the soul it's the time we prepare the soul which is the the spiritual now <laughs> so that is how life is in every aspect of life we have the physical we have the spiritual so this is a time we prepare spiritually too for the coming of our savior jesus christ so it doesn't happen and we say we're not prepared we're not ready we're not willing so that we are saying come 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 emmanuel come you know we are begging him to come especially in the second part of advent we will begin to talk about emmanuel we begin to talk about his, his physical coming and relate it to the spiritual so we are inviting him we are saying that we are ready we are willing that he should come and come and that means that we are expected all of us to to draw closer to the redeemer to draw closer to the savior it is a time of retreat it's a time of prayer it is a time where you go for confession you try to reconcile yourself to god that's what it's all it's all about so this time the church offers us an ample opportunity for us to return back to the lord and for us to prepare ourselves for the final coming on the last day that final coming is something that each and every one of us you know will, 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 will have to go through each one each one of us one day will return back to the lord you know just like every year there is christmas and so also it is that every child of god one day will go back to the lord so we need to be ready we need to be prepared we need to look at our lives what is our thing that is keeping you far away from God? What is it that is making you not happy? What is it that is making you, you know, not to live in good relationship with your neighbor, your friends? It is a time of reconciliation. It is a time of repentance. It is a time where we should think of the things of God, not only the things of the world, <laughs> not only the things of the world. And so we pray at this time, at this Sunday, that God who has given us this beautiful opportunity through the work of the church, you know, through the fathers of the church, that God will also help us to prepare ourselves, prepare our lives, prepare our soul for his coming, that God will have mercy on us. Where we have sinned against him, he will forgive us. I want to pray for you today as we begin this new year, that God himself will hear our prayers and make us fit for his kingdom. Let us pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Almighty God and Father, we begin a new liturgical year today. We begin Advent and also we are drawing even closer and closer to the end of the year 2020. It has been a year that is characterized by so many evil things, especially deaths. From COVID-19 to the death of prominent citizens of our country, our state, our local government, and those who are dear to us, we pray, Almighty God, that you continue to protect your children. You continue to help your children. Never abandon us, Almighty God. Do not forsake us. Do not leave us alone. We beg you, Almighty God, to continue to be with us, especially in times of difficulties, in times of challenges, in times of trouble. Because in Psalm 125, they say, those who trust in you are like Mount Zion. In verse 2, it says, the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his own people. We beg you to continue to guide us, Lord, from all troubles, from all difficulties. As we begin a new year, Lord, help us. Make it successful for us. Open doors for us. Give, grant us happiness. True happiness that the world cannot give. The one that comes from you alone. Protect our country, Nigeria, Lord, and help all our leaders. Help all those who are in positions. And help also our economy. That Lord, especially in this time of recession, do not allow us, Almighty God, to perish. Continue to help our leaders to think on the right thing to do. And touch the lives of those who are in position. That they may be able to work for the betterment of this country. For those who have died or unmarked with the sign of faith, beg that you grant them eternal rest, eternal peace, 
in your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of the mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you with your remain both now and forevermore. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you for watching this video. I believe you are blessed. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more motivational and spiritual messages. Visit www.fathertomasonabedailydigest.com